had a show where you can come and get the tea. She's got everything you want. Tune in now so you can see. It's Ariana, the person out the tea. 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 And now, it's Ariana. The person out the tea. It's Ariana. The person out the tea. It's Ariana. The person out the tea. Thank you so much for tuning in to Worldwide Entertainment TV. This is the Averon of the Personality TV show where we give you the latest scoop here in Nashville, Tennessee. A little bit of entertainment and some good old sports, y'all. So let's hop right on in. The November 6th general election is just right around the corner and it is important that you get out and you exercise your right to vote. These candidates will be representing your local state, your city, and your community. And it is so important that I found a tutorial for those of you that are located in Tennessee to show you how to and where to vote. Take a look. Tennessee, we have some remarkable candidates. Make sure you get out and exercise your rights to vote. For U.S. Senate, we have Republican Marsha Blackburn. For Democrat, we have Phil Bredesen and several independent candidates. For governor, you have Republican Bill Lee and Democrat Carl Dean and a lot, like plenty of independent candidates for this bracket. Former First Lady, she has a message for us all. Take a look at this video. And that's really what this is all about. Getting every citizen to make voting a part of who they are. It's about helping everyone recognize something that feels important to them. Even if it's only one thing. And it can be anything. I know that every parent here has opinions about their kid's schools, and whether there's enough resources to ensure their child is getting the best education possible. I know that. I know everyone commuting to work has opinions on the traffic and the bus routes. I know every parent wants their kids to be safe, whether they're at school or at a concert with friends. And Lord knows, we all have opinions on issues like health care and the economy and how much we're paying in taxes. What we need to do is bridge the gap between caring about that kind of stuff and actually doing something about it. That's our job. Because if you care about something but you don't make your voice heard, trust me, as I said last week, this democracy will move on without you. That's how it works. That's how it should work. While you're staying silent, frustrated, mad, thinking the system is rigged, other people are speaking up. And you might not like what they have to say. They might not see things the way you do. They might not understand the kinds of challenges your family is dealing with. They might not have any problem leaving you and your family behind. So when you don't vote, 
What you're really doing is letting somebody else take power over your own life. And as I said last week, you wouldn't give your grandmother the power to decide what clothes you wear to the club. You wouldn't give your crazy uncle the power to post a picture to your Instagram feed. So why would you give a stranger the power to make far more important decisions in your life? Period. It's a beautiful new day for Nashville-based Electric Like Orchestra fans. The British rock group known as Jeff Lynn's ELO have scheduled a concert at the Nashville Bridgestone Arena on July 3rd. Tickets go on sale at 10 a.m. Monday, October 29th. And boy, it's going to be an amazing, an amazing um, concert. The Nashville Dates comes on the heels of Lynn's first extensive U.S. tour since 1981. Were any of you out there trying to be the next billionaire like me? The easy, fast way, though. Well, guess what, you guys? Our turn has now been taken away from us. Someone in North Carolina won the $1.6 billion. But look, the Powerball is getting on up there, so we may have another shot. With a $2 ticket bought at the KC Mart, someone became South Carolina's newest tycoon. State lottery officials advise the unidentified winner. Consult with a trusted advisor, a legal advisor, a trusted financial advisor. Now, let's see if I can make you a billionaire tonight. A half hour after last night's big drawing, South Carolina lottery officials knew they had a grand prize winner. And it turned out the only winner. C.J. Patel owns the KC Mart. You're also going to get $50,000 for selling the winning tickets. That's a pretty good day's work, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Almost a year one. Another winner, South Carolina, which earns $61 million in state taxes on the jackpot and up to $15 million in ticket sales. The $1.537 billion jackpot was adjusted downward slightly for ticket sales. After taxes, a lump sum payment would be worth roughly $500 million. This is the lucky player. Back at the KC Mart, they're hoping lightning strikes twice. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. Let's get back to business, I guess. Yeah, so congratulations to whoever it was out there. I, I know I literally bought like six tickets to try to be the next millionaire, but congratulations. November is right around the corner, and you know what that means, Nashville. Nashvember. Project 615 will host the fifth annual Nashvember on Saturday, November the 10th, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Track 1. There will be over 60 local vendors, food trucks, and live broadcasts from Lightning 100. This event is a family-friendly event, and guess what, you guys? It is free. Track 1 is located at 1211 4th Avenue South, Nashville, Tennessee. Happening at the same time is the Music City Yoga Festival. The 6th Annual Music City Yoga Festival is Saturday, November the 10th, like I said, at the same time, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Rocket Town. This event is a celebration for Nashville's yoga community. There will be yoga classes, a marketplace full of local vendors, food trucks, and live music. Tickets are starting at $40 per person, and the proceeds go to the Small World Yoga. So, Nashville, get out there and go. Say goodbye to the summer chill salads and hello to the warmer, heartier, delightful dishes that I'm sure you and your family will enjoy this fall. First up, you have the white chicken chili, which is amazing. I just had my sister make it for me last weekend. The next one is pork chili blanco. Now, this is kind of, it's not for vegetarians, of course, because it has pork. But if you would like to take the pork out, it's still an amazing dish. The next one is baked citrus fish and almond and beans so never really tasted this um i've had some friends taste it and they absolutely love it i am not a big almond fan so i don't know i'll probably take those out so next is the honey balsamic autumnal chicken now i don't know why this word is that hard to pronounce but it is really good um if you guys have tasted balsamic the um sauce you know it's amazing. Next is a pan roast steak with buttered potatoes and beans. This, okay, I'm hungry. That, 
platter is amazing. Um, and I like that it's pan roasted, which means that it's sitting in there for a couple of hours. Amazing. And lastly is chicken and nochi soup. I think this is more so of a light, maybe brunch type um, deal or platter. So yeah, those are my favorites. Make sure you guys go and check them out. And we also sell them here um, in Nashville at our different um, Nashville go-to places. <laughs> So you guys, I have some very bad news for you Iggy Azalea fans out there. The Bad Girls Tour is canceled for some unforeseen circumstances. Izzy took to Twitter to explain what happened. She tweeted, believe me, I was really excited for this tour and I'm genuinely disappointed it can't happen this year. The choice was out of my hands and not my call to make. I hope I will get to see you all in person one day. I love you. And she followed up with an additional tweet saying, all I can do is keep pushing, keep recording, and keep a smile on my face. So you guys, if you were looking forward to actually seeing Iggy, I am so sorry, but I'm sure she'll be doing some local visiting. For all you stoners out there, or shall I say Wiz Khalifa fans out there, Wiz is on a new wave. He is about to release an R&B album he had an opportunity to sit down with power 106 the crew show which is located in los angeles i used to listen to them every day no but he said this next album is full-on singing so that means we could what what are the odds you guys Wiz khalifa can sing that that that's going to be amazing so make sure you be on the lookout for that now, Wiz, will you be the next R&B sensation yes you will be <laughs> i, saw I believe it i saw that yeah yeah what does that mean it means that my uh, my next album is all singing, <laughs> like full on, like. Are melodies, you committed to melodies. this idea? Are you I, committed to this I idea? I already got like twenty songs done. You see, man, put the music yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to do it? Totally <laughs> <laughs> up to you. Totally up good. to you. The I'm last good. time we did that, we went viral, nah, my guy. No. Nope. Every time he comes nope. on here, he goes Listen, viral. The last nope. time we did that, over fifteen million <laughs> views on I'm YouTube. Good. He did it last. He tried to get me to do Hello, freestyle Hello, oh, you feel time. me? I'm good. <laughs> I and just do you woke have... up. This is my morning voice. <laughs> I got you. Got to warm up when you do R and B, like you know. What I mean? See, see, <laughs> <laughs> it's that easy, Wiz. You you having vocal coaches though for the uh, album? I, I'm actually like I just yeah <laughs> yeah I do got a vocal coach. <laughs> right, she she one of the best in the game. That's right. right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with having a coach, my dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know I was trying to figure out how to put it though, like how to say that. But absolutely, 100. percent I got a vocal coach. My man. She taught me some things I ain't even know about my voice. Really. Whoa. Oh, that sounds yeah. intimate. So it's go time. It's very <laughs> intimate. Well, there is some good news in for Chicago. Mayor candidate Amara Inya, she has had some major endorsements from some major artists in the industry. She was previously endorsed by Chance the Rapper, which brought heavy publicity to her campaign. I want to work with somebody that's, that's about change, somebody that's about uh, our community, somebody that's about equity, somebody that's about fairness. And the one person in my research of this wide open race that views align with me um, would obviously be uh, candidate Amara Enya. Prior to Chance the Rapper public endorsement, Amara Inya was reportedly facing thousands of dollars in fines from Illinois State Board of Elections. She was told she had to pay over $70,000 before December 20th to be eligible to officially run for mayor. And now she receives even more good news from someone who the media hasn't been so fond of. Kanye West. He gives the exact amount needed for her to run to support her as well. Venom is a must-see. You gotta take a look at this trailer. Thank you for bringing us collectively to this moment. It is a moment that so many have dreamed of claiming. History starts today. guy you work for is an evil person. I don't work for him. My firm works for him. Are you gonna behave yourself tomorrow? I told you I'm gonna do my job. 
I'm a reporter. I follow people that do not want to be followed. What about the allegations that you recruit the most vulnerable for tests that end up killing people? Your time to go. You finished, Mr. Brock. Is that a threat? You had to learn how to hide in plain sight. I'm pretty good at it. But you, you suck. Whoever you are. I work at the Life Foundation, and I need your help. We found something. We call them symbiotes. Carlton Drake believes that the union between human and symbiote is the key to our evolution. I'm feeling really sick. I'm hearing a voice. Eddie. You're not real. You were just in my head. I'm gonna need Mr. Drake's property back. I don't know. Why would we do that? If you're gonna stay, you will only hurt bad people. The way I see it, we can do whatever we want. Do we have a deal? Are you willing to sacrifice? The one thing you hold most dear. You should be extremely afraid. What the hell are you? We are Venom. Next up is The Hate You Give. Star witnesses the fatal shooting of her childhood best friend, Kalia, at the hand of a police officer. Now facing pressure from all sides of the community, Star must find her voice and stand up for what's right. Take a look. Boyfriend. Yeah, I heard, but it's all good. Really? We've been together our whole lives, Star. We got time. My name is Star. Two R's. Daddy named me that. Garden Heights. Mama and Daddy says our life is here because our people are here. We got Mr. Rubin's Barbecue, Mr. Lewis's Barbershop, and Daddy's Store. The high school is where you go to get junk, high, or pregnant. We don't go there. Williamson is another world, so when I'm here, I'm star version two. Yo, those kids are lit. Basically, Williamson star doesn't give anyone a reason to call her ghetto, and I hate myself for doing it. Until the weekend comes around. I get those goosebumps every time. What's up? Where you been at? I, mean, I don't know, you be hanging with all the white kids. Shut up. Yeah, when you're not around, when you go that to the side. Out of the car. Yo, Star, you okay? Go back where he told you. Khalil, I'm not playing. Go back where... <laughs> what did you do? Today, Garden Heights is reeling after the shooting of a 17-year-old black teenager by a white police officer. We live in a complicated world. It doesn't seem that complicated to me. Violence, brutality. It's the same story, just a different name. When I attack with impact, it's real tech. Oh, the back cat waited and sat, debated to... It's best if she don't talk to father. You're threatening her. It's about more than just color. It's about black people, poor people, everybody at the bottom. I need to speak for him. You think we can never achieve the inconceivable. We don't belong, but we hear unbelievable. When you're ready to talk, you talk. Don't ever let nobody make you be quiet. I ain't named you Star by accident. Now coming to theaters November 2nd is a very highly anticipated film by Tyler Perry. Nobody is Fool, and it's featuring some of your favorite stars. Take a look. If I close this deal, I'll be the first black woman to be a VP in the company. Hi, Mom. Hey, darling. Listen, it's your sister. She's getting out. If you could pick her up, I'd appreciate it. What time? What time, honey? It's jail. You get there when you can, like the song said. 
Hey, girl, hey! Fearless! Fearless! I'm about to go out here and shake this ass. Can we go to the club? Ooh, this is nice! They don't smell like roaches in here or nothing. How you get sparkles in the back of an animal? What is this, a care bear? I need a job. Why don't you just work here? Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, that is so dope. Uh, where it say sex? What, what you want me to put right there? What you want to put? Plenty. <laughs> I let you sex is from my exes. My sister is a bit much. How can I help you? I do what they say. You've been standing in line all this time and you don't know what you want. OK, you could just stand right there and think about it. Who is this? Charlie. Charlie. He is an amazing guy. She met him online a year ago, but she's never even seen him. He seemed too good to be true. If the man looks too good to be true, he is. You're being catfished. So the dude ain't real? No, the dude ain't real. He could be anybody. We need to go and find this son of a bitch who catfished me. And we gonna tear his ass up. This should be good. Like that. I'm just looking at Serious? Girl, I got his address. We gonna do this tonight. We gonna need a saw, some plastic, burner phone. I gotta go to the bathroom. That's good. You need to go ahead and let all the liquids out because you don't want to leave no DNA. You're not helping. Every time you try to kill a man, you gonna squirt a little pee. I know that for sure. <laughs> Mama, it's Tanya. Who? It's Tanya. Oh, no. Tanya no here. Mama, I know it's you. This connection is so rickety. Hello? What? Mama, you in the window. I'm sorry, what? We not on no cell phone, Mama. I, I can't hear you, baby. I can't hear Oh, my. Mama! <laughs>
couple of guys were suspended. Uh, Ingram was suspended for four games, mm -hmm. I think. Rondo uh, was suspended for three, and then Chris Paul was suspended for two. So, like I said, uh, you you believe the spark of this whole situation was Ingram, correct? Yes. If if Ingram don't push uh, Harden, none of this occur. And you know, for some reason, Ingram felt as though uh, Harden came at him really hard on that drive to the basket. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the nature of ball, right? That's, that's, that's ball's physical play, and it looked to me as if you know Harden was trying to let everyone know that it was the bucket was good. Mm -hmm. That's who was saying it was good, and as they crossed path. You see when Ingram pushed him. And as Ingram pushed him, everybody was blocked, you know, breaking that but up. But I'm still trying to get an understanding of how it boiled down to Rondo and, and Paul. Like, where was – I mean, we missed something. It's something that we don't hear, well, we don't see. Well, you have some history where uh, Chris Paul and Rondo in past years have been getting into it mm -hmm. uh, in games before. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it just probably just led to the overflow of the game being tight. Mm -hmm. And they had opportunity – by game being established to actually be in each other's face and, mm -hmm. and uh, the so-called phantom spit, which I, I still didn't see it, uh, the spit, but... Uh, I think it was like a mouth guard switch and then he breathed and then spit came out. Well, however you want to put it, the saliva came on him. Like he, he was supposed to actually defend himself. What would you would have done? I would have hit him with uh. the left cross <laughs> just like... Uh. Community yeah, mission I, leader nah, of the Baptist nah, Church, nah, Pastor Avery yeah, Payne. <laughs> I would have got mine in too, you know what I'm saying? Oh, says the leader of the yeah, community, yeah, stop the violence. Yeah, him, that part. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, that would have happened. <laughs> now we're going to go on to uh, predictions. Uh, now, I, I think the last few weeks I've been, I think my record is probably like about six and three against you, seven and three. Something like that. I think we've been doing. I think when I've done ten predictions, I think your record may be three and seven, and my record is seven and three. Hey, Rupert, how do you? Like yeah, that. you think? I'm gonna uh, let you. They don't pay you to think. They pay you to know. That's yeah, what you used to uh, tell me. Okay, but we that gonna, is incorrect. We're not gonna have this argument again. Okay. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get on into uh, the first game: the Pittsburgh right. Steelers versus the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Who do you pick? I pick Pittsburgh. You pick why? Just because it's my mom's team and go Pittsburgh. Because <laughs> that's your mom's team. You're going to pick Pittsburgh because that's your mom's team. I'm going to pick Pittsburgh I because I think Pittsburgh had a better team. They had experienced players. Cleveland Browns, that was like, what was their record last year? Owen. Owen, 16. So they have a new quarterback uh, 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 from Oklahoma, uh, Bakerfield, I think that's his name. And you did it with Pittsburgh, they had a perimeter power in and year out. So I, I just take uh, Pittsburgh in that game. Uh, I think the score will be 27-14. 27. Today is October 27. 27 is my lucky number anyways. But okay, 27-14. All right, now we're going to go to the next game, which is the Denver Broncos versus my team, the Kansas City Chiefs, with the hottest quarterback in the game, Mahorns. He's lighting it up. He has weapons everywhere from Sammy Watkins to Tyreek Hill to Kareem Hunt. They just doing things. I know our defense is not that good, but you have to score some points on us to win. So who do you pick? The Denver Broncos or the Kansas City Chiefs? Well, I always have to go against the grain against you just because you always think you're right. So I'm going to go with the uh, Denver Broncos. Okay. That's a real bad pick. I thought I was going to say good, but that's no, a bad okay. pick. Denver but, Broncos. Uh, okay. Y'all heard that. She took Denver. Okay. The Green Bay Packers versus the L.A. Rams. You know anything about the Green Bay? You know Green Bay. I know that's Rogers. my uncle's team, Doris. Yeah, yeah. Um, they got the one of the best. The LA Rams. I watched. That was in the. Um, uh, we watched them when I was living in LA. That was in the. They um, undefeated. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, I I would say I would I, I'm gonna go with the LA Rams. I'm gonna go with the LA Rams. We got undefeated LA Rams. They got a real hot back by the name of Gurley that's doing real well. Uh, the quarterback is a golf. He's doing real well. Green Bay is Green Bay. They have uh, Aaron Rodgers. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with upset game right here. I'm going to go with the Packers. Okay. Over the Rams. Do you know their record? Uh, the Rams is, they done played six games, seven games. Whatever it is, they that know. Six okay. and over seven and okay. over. So uh, and Green Bay, I think they may be four and three or four and two or something like that. Okay. Not real sure, you know. So this will be the game to determine 
Nothing. Nothing. Just who, who, who wins. Who, who wins the prediction. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, New York Jets and the Chicago Bears. Who do you pick? Um, this is just out of the sky. Um, New York Jets. All of your predictions are out of no, the sky. No, they're not. Just because I don't know specific uh, players doesn't mean that uh, I don't know the team. I've watched, I've watched okay, football. Okay, who you pick? I just said the New York just Jets. Just because you watch it don't mean you paying attention. I'm paying attention. Okay, you take the Jets, right? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna take the Chicago Bears. That's two. That's two games that we are uh, folks. disagree. Okay. okay. All right. Philadelphia Eagles versus Jacksonville Jaguars. Philadelphia Eagles. You picking Philly? Okay. You picking Why Philly. you picking Philly? Philly, it, the the oh, Jacksonville. The love, that's the only thing you know. <laughs> no, what? no, because Name I'm a Meek Mill. Because I'm a Meek Mill fan. Oh, you so. Okay, Meek Mill, wide receiver. <laughs> no, wide no, receiver. no, he's just from Philly. Oh, okay. He's just from Philly. Okay, I, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Philly as well in this game. All right, in the last game we have the New England Patriots versus the Buffalo Bills. Uh, who do you pick? Who do you pick? I'm gonna pick New England. Okay. Who do you pick? I was gonna pick New England. Who on New England team? <laughs> you trying to you pick gotta, No, you gotta know who on New England. Who's yes. the quarterback? Uh, come on, don't put me on the spot. The quarterback. Uh, is no, it Brad I know. Pitts? No, no. Brad Pitt. Is it Brad Pitt? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Tom um, Brady. Yeah, Tom Brady, the one that with the with the <laughs> deflating the footballs. Come on, dude. I know what's going on. I couldn't get it out. He deflated the football. Yeah, that's they old cheated. Dude. It don't matter. That's who he is. Okay, so you know anybody who played with the Bills? No, nope, They got the Jefferson Street Bills right down the street. <laughs> Look for about 10 Jefferson Street Bills. But anyway, we go. <laughs> now we're going to go on to our team, the Titans, which uh, they have a bye this week. Bye week, yeah. We're and we really need that bye week because we, we are on a three game losing streak right now. We lost. We shouldn't have lost the last game. Why we shouldn't have lost the last game? Because we should have held them. They should never did what they did at the last, with no se uh, seconds on the clock. What's the team? Who did we play? What did they do with the team on the clock? What did they do? They ran this, the box. I mean, no, they kicked this is what shouldn't have happened. Oh, what? What you were trying to say is that you think that the Titans coach shouldn't have went for the win. He went for two points. Right. And he At tried to win. So you, what do you think? Them. You don't think it's not both of them. It's a two-point conversion. Right, we didn't get, right, but we didn't get the additional points. That's what I'm saying. Right. So what I'm, my question to you is. I mean, apart to time out. Do you Let me just coach? get this in the book. Do I know football like that? No, I do not. But do I know the logistics? Yes, I do. And what you're not going to do on my show is continue it, to try it, to belittle it, me and tell me what I don't know. Yes, you know football. You played it. No, I did not. Well, no, yes, you did. You did play football. I did play a little bit. But, no, I know what you were trying to say. But at well, the end of the day. Then at that point is when you're supposed to, you know, come on in and encourage me and get get out what I am trying to say. Not tell, well, tell me. What you're trying to say. Now, what you're trying, trying to say. say. You finished it. I wanted to get the two point. I, I wish that they did not go for the two point conversion. Dang, dang, now you learn it. You learn it. Yeah, but you I don't know. learn on okay. camera. We learn behind the scenes. Okay. The first loss was they lost to the Bills. Uh, 13 to 12 on the 7th. And then they, and they came back around on the 14th of this month. Do you see a trait? We keep losing by. Well, no, the Raven game was 21 to nothing. Yeah, but so besides and, that game. And, and we supposed to have a real good offensive line, right? Mm -hmm. He was sacked 11 times in 41 actual possessions of offense that we had. Mm -hmm. So you get sacked 11 times out of actual 42 possessions of offense. That's that's not good, yeah. and, and we have what some real. What percentage is it? Uh, I don't really know. You know, you good with math. I don't. I'm, I'm not, trying to I'm think. Not good at math, but it's not good. That's not good for our quarterback as well because he's taking a real beating back there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some linemen that we're paying paying a lot of money to to protect him. So I think uh, we need to uh, do a little better in the offensive line to help uh, Mariota. And Garbrick or whoever back their quarterback, and uh, uh, so they can do their jobs. So uh, we got three consecutive losses. Mm -hmm. We got this bye week that probably will help us with with guys that's injured mm -hmm. to uh, get healthy, uh, get their mindset back in order, uh, get their locker room together. To, uh, actual uh, leaders of the team, you know, to motivate to get the confidence back rolling after we won or two real impressive games against. Philly and Jacksonville. So I think uh, after we come back after bye week, uh, we will be ready. ready to win. All 
All right. Well, that is all the time we have left on Father Daughter Sports Talk. Make sure you guys have a happy and safe Halloween, and we'll see you back next week. Boo. <laughs>